Here's everything you need to know about making charts like this in React using Chart.js. We'll start off with a boilerplate React project which you can make either using Create React App or Vite. We just have three divs over here with some custom styling which is not relevant to the project but you can find in the GitHub repo linked in the description down below. And to create charts in React using Chart.js, we'll firstly stop the server and we need to download two dependencies. We'll say npm install, then we'll install chart.js, which is the actual JavaScript library, which lets us create charts. This doesn't need to be used with React. You can use it with plain JavaScript or Angular or Vue or anything else. And the second dependency which we install is React chart.js2. This provides a React wrapper around chart.js and lets us easily import components and use them in a React project. So we'll hit install and then we can start up the server again. Now we can go inside our app and import chart from chart.js slash auto. And this import is needed to render out the charts inside your application. Next, we can import the different components which we need from the React chart.js library. So for each type of chart, there's a different component. In this project, we'll be doing the bar, donut and line charts. But you can check out the documentation of chart.js for other charts that they have. Firstly, we'll be creating the bar chart in the second div. So we'll replace this text with a bar component. And to render out anything, we need to pass in some data into this component. And for that, we have the data proc, which takes in an object. And the first field in the object is called labels. And this is the values along the X axis of your chart. And it's represented by an array of strings. The next field is the data sets field, which is an array of objects. In this, each object contains a label as well as the data. The label represents whatever value you're measuring, in this case, the revenue. And the data is an array of numbers, which represent the Y value corresponding to each of the labels inside the labels field, which we mentioned before. So if we save this, we see that we have a bar chart, which has a value of 200 for A, 300 for B, and 400 for C. If you want to add another series of bars inside this chart, you can go down and create another object, give it a label of loss, and the data will be 90, 80, 70. And that's how you render out two bars inside the same bar chart. Now, usually you won't be hard coding the data inside the chart like this. You'll be importing it from an API. In our case, we'll make some JSON files and read the data from them. So inside the source folder, we'll create another folder called data and we'll make a file called source data.json and we'll paste some data in here. It's basically an array of objects and each object represents a bar in our bar chart. The label is a string which corresponds to the X axis value and the value is a number which corresponds to the y-axis value. In app.jsx, we'll import the data from the JSON file. We'll replace the labels field by mapping through each of the source data elements and using the label from the particular object. We'll delete the second set of bar charts, replace revenue with count, and do something similar for the data field where we map through the source data and for each object, we use the value at that given object. And now we can render out the data from our JSON file. Now our bar chart does look pretty plain and we want to add some styling to it. So you can head over to the chart.js documentation given in the description down below. And if you want to add some styling for the bar chart, for example, you can go down to chart types, bar chart. And if you go down below, you'll see that there are some data set properties and we can apply any of the properties down below to any of the four methods given over here. In our case, we only have one data set and we want to add properties for just that. So we'll go with the first option. We firstly want to specify a different background color for each bar. So we can see that we have a background color field and it says it's indexable, which means that we need to provide a different value for each index of our data. And then we'll also add a border radius. According to the documentation to apply a style to a certain data set, we have to go into data.datasets and at a particular index, we need to give the value. So inside our app, we'll go into data.datasets and then add this particular index below the data field. We'll paste in the background colors and we'll have a different background color for each of the bars. And if we save that, we see we have different background colors. We can also make a border radius apply to the entire data set. And now we have a border radius as well. The great thing about chart.js is that each of the chart components take in data the same way. And to prove that, I'm going to copy over the code for the bar chart which we have over here and paste it into the third div. And all I'll do is replace the bar with a donut. And we see that the labels and the values are rendered out without making any changes. We will make one change, which is instead of having the border radius, we'll add a border color to each of the elements. And that's our donut chart. Lastly, we're going to make a line chart with two lines. And as an exercise, I'm going to give you the format of the data. And I want you to try rendering it out by yourself. So in the data folder, we'll make another file and we'll call it revenue data.json.
and the data will again be an array of objects. Each object will have a label being the month and then we'll have two values which is the revenue and the cost which will represent the y-axis values. Once you're done trying to make the line chart, come back to the video to see the answer. So firstly inside our app, we'll import the data from the JSON file. We'll replace the text inside the first div with the line component. We want to pass in the data prop which will be an object. The first field will be the labels. So we'll map through each object inside the revenue data. And for each object, we'll just use its label as the x-axis value. Next, we want to pass in the y values for each of these labels. So we'll use the data sets field, which will be an array. We'll pass in an object, which will have a label of revenue. For the data, which is the y value, we'll map through each of the objects and we'll use the revenue field in each object. We're also going to give it a background color and border color of blue. And we also want to render out the cost, so we'll pass in another object. Its label will be cost. The data, which is the Y value, will be the cost at each object. And we'll give it a background color and border color of red. And there we have it. Now that we can render the charts, we can see that the charts aren't exactly filling out all the space that they can, and they look a little bit weird. And to fix this, we need to use something called options in Chart.js. Options let us specify certain properties for our chart, such as the smoothness of the lines in a line chart, or the title for a chart or how the charts are rendered out in a responsive manner. There are two ways to specify options for our charts. One is globally for every single chart in our app and the second is locally for each individual chart that we are using. The documentation tells us that for global options we need to use something called chart.defaults and to make our charts responsive we'll be using the responsive field in the options and the maintain aspect ratio. So to set the default options we'll firstly import defaults from chart.js and to define these global properties, we need to do it outside our component. So at the top, we'll say defaults.maintain aspect ratio and set that to false. And we'll set the responsiveness to be true. And if we refresh, we see that the charts look a lot better now. Similarly, we want a title for each of our charts. And if we go to the documentation, we see that we can add options for the titles through chart.defaults.plugins.title. So we'll go back into our app and paste these four properties for the title. And we see that chart.js made some space for the titles, but we aren't rendering anything out yet. And this is because the title will be unique for each chart and we can't define it globally. If we go back to the documentation, we can see that we can have local options through options.plugins.title and we want to specify the text for each of our charts separately. So starting with our donut chart, we'll give it an options, which will be an object and we'll give it plugins.title.text and we see that the title is rendered out. We'll do the same thing for the bar chart and the same thing for the line chart. Now, as an exercise, we see that we have a line chart over here, but it's quite jagged. I want you to figure out how to make it smooth by passing in some options. Once you're done with that, come back to the video to see what the answer is. The documentation for the line chart tells us that we can target properties for the line elements using options.elements.line, and the field we want to target is tension. So all we need to do is inside the options for the line chart above the plugins, we write down elements.line.tension and give it a value of 0.5 for example and now our line chart is smooth. So that's about everything you need to know to get started with Chart.js in React. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please do like, share and subscribe. And if you have any other ideas for tutorials I should work on, let me know down in the comments down below. Until next time, thanks for watching.